Hello friends, today we will discuss about one of the most important topic that is force transfer mechanism in 2D frames. So let's say I have a 2D frame like this and this frame is subjected to a lateral load of 10 kN. Here you can see that this beam and column is connected through shear connection. Okay, If you don't know what is shear connection and what is movement connection then you can watch my previous video on this. I will add the link in the description below. So now for this frame I want to know what will be the load path means how this load of 10 kN will be transferred at the base and what will be the support reaction. So one method is the conventional approach that we use that is through equilibrium conditions we will find the support reactions. There is also one another method which is the shortcut method in which by directly looking at the frame we can calculate the support reactions quickly in no time. So I will show that method as well. So let's first discuss the conventional approach. So since support A is a pin support so we will have a vertical reaction and horizontal reaction and at support B we will have only vertical reaction since it is a roller support. Now applying equilibrium conditions so fx summation of fx is equal to 0 so I can say that HA plus HB is equal to 10 kN. Now since HB is equal to 0 so I can say that HA is equal to 10 kN. Now applying the second equilibrium condition that is summation of Fy is equal to 0 so I can say that VA plus VB is equal to 0. Now let's apply the third equilibrium condition that is summation of moment is equal to 0. So here this 10 into 3 that is 30 will create a clockwise moment about point A and this VB into 5 will create an anti-clockwise moment so minus VB into 5 is equal to 0. So I can say that VB is equal to 6 kN. So from equation 2 since VB is equal to 6 so I can say that VA is equal to minus 6. Here the negative sign indicates that whatever the direction we have assumed is incorrect. So instead of VA being upward it should be downward. So this is the conventional method. Now let's discuss the shortcut method. So as per this method whatever the lateral load that is acting okay that will be directly transferred at the base only to that support where vertical bracing is connected. So this 10 kN will create a shear of 10 kN at only at this support that is at support A. At this support there will be no shear this shear will be 0. Now what about the vertical reactions? Now this 10 into 3 will create a clockwise movement of 30. Okay. And this 30 will create a push and pull. Here it will be in downward direction, here it will be in upward direction. And the value of this push and pull will be this movement of 30 divided by the length of this beam that is 5 and here also it will be 30 by 5 so that is 6 but how can we decide this direction so this since this applied moment is clockwise so this should be anti-clockwise so this you can see that if this is downward and this is upward then this will be creating a anti-clockwise movement so that is resisting movement Okay, so this is that shortcut method. Now let me show you one more example. Now for this frame, again 10, this lateral load will be first transferred to this beam. Okay, and it will move and it will come here. Okay, now this 10 into 5. So we will have a moment of 
fifty. Okay, and so here vertical direction will be how much? It will be fifty divided by four. That is the length of this beam. Fifty divided by four. That is twelve point five. And this lateral load ten will be transferred only to this support. Why? Because basing is connected only to this support. So directly I can say that here it will be ten. At these supports there will be no shear. Here it will be zero. Here also it will be zero. Okay. Now let's discuss one more example. Now this ten. First of all this load will be transferred to this beam. Okay, and then then it will go to this beam. Okay, this ten into three. That is thirty kilonewton meter moment will be created. Okay, so this thirty will create what push and pull. So at this point it will be creating push and pull of how much? Thirty divided by length of this beam. That is five. Thirty divided by five. Here also it will be thirty divided by five. Okay, so now the load. Is coming through this bracing, okay? You can see that since the load is acting like this, so this bracing will be stretched, okay? This bracing will be stretched like like this. So this bracing will be under tension, okay? So now this force got transferred through this bracing and it came here, okay? Now this brace, this force again will move forward like this. Okay, and it will be coming over here. Okay, so now this same ten kilonewton will come over here. Now again, we need to apply the same principle. This ten kilonewton will create again a moment of ten into three. So that is again thirty. Okay, and this thirty divided by five that will be the final. Push and pull at these supports. Thirty divided by five. So that will be the push and pull at these supports. And what about the shear? Since this bracing is connected to only this support, so I can directly say that shear will be there only at this support, and the value will be ten kilonewton. At these supports, there will be no shear. Now. Let's verify these values in StatPro software. So here I have opened a blank stat file. Okay. So let me create a one node at zero zero zero. Then I will create a node at let's say five meter. I will create one more node at. Uh, Uh, three meter and one more node at five meter. So I have created a two D frame like this. Okay, this is our two D frame. Here you can see that the height of column is three meter and the length of beam is five meter. Okay. Now, let me add the member properties to this. So, here I am considering a random section. So, I will select Indian code, and let's say I am giving ISMB two hundred. Okay. Uh, let me add a bracing as well. Okay, let me add shear connection to this beam. So I will release M by M Z at start and at end. Okay, I will assign to this beam and I will assign member trust to 
this bracing so i will assign truss okay now let's assign section properties so i am assigning ismb 200 to all the properties as of now okay now let's assign the support conditions so first of all i will create a pin support and i will assign to this joint and let's say i want to add a roller support at this point so i will go in create in fix but i will release everything except fy since roller support only of offers vertical reaction that is fy and i will assign to this support okay now let's add the load so in load case details i will add the load case and i will add a nodal load of 10 okay and i will assign to this joint okay now let me add the analysis command okay now let's run the analysis okay go to post processing and go to reactions so here you can see that at this joint you are getting a reaction of lateral reaction that is shear of 10 okay and push and pull of 6 and 6 and here you can see that there is no shear now you might be wondering that since it, this is a roller support so there is no shear but even if there is a pin support at this joint then also there will be no shear at this joint because the bracing is connected to this joint so all the shear will be transferred to this joint so let's verify that as well so now I am assigning pin support to this joint ok so now these both the joints will have a vertical reaction and horizontal reaction this joint will also have vertical reaction and horizontal reaction but when you will run the file and you will check shear will be transferred only to this support so let's verify that ok let me run and go to post processing mode here you can see that the shear is zero so this was about it on how to how the load will get transferred at the base and in what members will have compression and in what members will have tension so i i, I will give you one assignment to solve okay this is the assignment and in this you need to tell me that what will be the support reactions at these supports so that's all for this thanks for watching bye for now